Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Monsters in Mythology. I'm T.M. Sparrow, writer and homeschooling mom, and today I'm going to tell you a little about werewolves. Since tomorrow is the first full moon of the year, I thought this would be the perfect time to start a series about werewolf legends. Which means that this is just the first of several videos I plan to do about werewolves this year. Werewolves are one of my favorite supernatural creatures, and because of their popularity throughout history, there are actually a lot of legends and stories to tell. For this video, I'm going to tell you about some of the earliest werewolf stories. First up is Enkidu from the Epic of Gilgamesh, although for me this one is a little bit of a stretch. I've never actually read it, but from my understanding, the story goes a bit like this. Gilgamesh was a Sumerian king on a quest for immortality. At first, he took a rather pragmatic view of this quest and tried to ensure his legacy by fathering as many children as he could. Eventually, it got to a point where no woman in his city was safe from Gilgamesh's advances, and the people turned to the gods for help. So Aruru, the goddess of earth and fertility, took some clay and created the beast man Enkidu. Now, Enkidu was described as being one-third man and two-thirds beast, and an equal to Gilgamesh, who was one-third man and two-thirds god. And I'm sure that there are plenty of interesting essays out there about what that says about the relationship between man and god and nature. Anyway, Aruru basically created Enkidu to be an equal and a rival to Gilgamesh. But instead of sending him straight to Gilgamesh, she sent him into the wilderness where he was raised by animals. So he has long shaggy hair and wears animal skins for clothes. So long story short, Enkidu and Gilgamesh have a wrestling match and become besties. They go on adventures and cause lots of trouble until the gods get fed up with them and Ishtar causes Enkidu to get sick and die. Then Gilgamesh gets mad, goes back to his quest for immortality, and ultimately fails at that. Now, some people, I guess because of the whole beast man thing, believe Enkidu to be the first literary representation of a werewolf-like being. The problem with that is that a lot of images depict Enkidu as more of a bull man, something more akin to the minotaur than a werewolf. And with no other real evidence of lycanthropy here, I'm not too keen on including Enkidu as part of werewolf lore. I'm more inclined to look at ancient Greece for the beginnings of werewolf lore. There are tons of ancient Greek stories that involve shape-shifting or curses that turn people into animals. Most notably, I can think of Zeus's many exploits and Circe, who turned men into pigs. I have two ancient Greek werewolf tales for you, and the first actually leads into the second. I have to start with Lycaon, the first werewolf and origin of the word lycan. Now, there are a few variations to this story depending on your source, but I'm going to try to stick with the one that I know best. Lycaon was the first king of Arcadia. He was known to be a cruel and impious man, so Zeus, the king of the gods, decided to test him. The king of the gods paid a visit to Lycaon, and perhaps as his own test, or just out of sheer evilness, Lycaon decided to try to trick Zeus into eating human flesh. Most versions of the story that I've read say that it wasn't just any human flesh the king served, but that of a child. In fact, in some stories, Lycaon even killed his own infant son to feed to Zeus. Zeus, of course, wasn't fooled, but he was full of wrath, 
and as a result, he caused a terrible flood. Although this part of the story ties into another Greek myth about Deucalion and Pyrrha, which bears a striking resemblance to the biblical story of Noah. It's in Ovid's Metamorphosis, however, that we see the origins of the werewolf story, as this is the version where Zeus punishes Lycaon by turning him into a wolf. Now, in Plato's Republic, we learn about a festival that was held in ancient Greece on Mount Lycaeus that was called Lycaea. From what I can tell, this ceremony involved sacrificing a child and a wolf and sort of mixing the two together. And then anyone who ate from that sacrifice would be turned into a wolf for nine years. On the tenth year, they could regain their human shape, but only if they didn't eat any more human flesh during the time that they were a wolf. It's worth mentioning that the Greek historian and traveler Pausinius mentioned this festival again around the year 2 AD. Pausinius also tells us about an ancient Greek boxer named Demarcus, who was said to have participated in this festival and turned into a wolf. He was, however, able to regain his human shape after the requisite nine years. And I can't talk about early werewolf legends without at least mentioning Romulus and Remus. Now, as you might have guessed, my Children of Remus series does play on this legend a little bit. Romulus and Remus were twin brothers who, as babies, were found and raised by the wolf Lupa. They later went on to found the city of Rome, and we all know the history from there. The original legends don't really have much to do with werewolves. Romulus and Remus both stayed human as far as those stories go. But you'll just have to wait until I finish Asylum to find out how this story and the story of Lycaon play into my own version of the werewolf myths. So that's really all I have time for today. But before I go, I did want to mention that this video is being released on my mom's birthday. So, happy birthday, mom! Okay, you guys can let me know in the comments below what your favorite werewolf legend is, or you can even wish my mom a happy birthday. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. See you next time!